Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and clutched in my sweaty grasp today I have the Galaxy A53 5G from Samsung, one of the most exciting mid-range mobiles to launch in 2022. Boasting a colourful water-resistant design, improved camera tech, beefier performance and a handful of other upgrades versus the older A52, this mid-range mobile has proper potential. Although Samsung has culled some features like the headphone jack, which is a massive suck. The Samsung Galaxy A53 5G will cost you 399 quid here in Blighty, I should know because I stuffed up my own actual real life cash for this wee bugger. So let's get unboxing and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So I'm not expecting to find much packed inside of this rather miniature box. Just one Samsung Galaxy A53 5G and another tinier box inside of that box which has your Pokey pin device quick start guides and USB cables so once again it is bring your own adapter and that's it absolutely everything you will find inside so now the fun all right so the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G all set up ready for action and as far as that design goes it does look remarkably similar to last year's A52 S 5G it's a 6.5 inch smartphone again with reasonably slender bezels surrounding that display and of course the old infinity or selfie orifice up top it is a completely flat display again here on the a53 with uh, what samsung ranks is quite a skinny build gotta say it looks quite chunky probably not helped by the fact that they are reasonably flat edges still this sammy blower ain't exactly too much of a handful certainly by modern standards 189 grams so reasonable heft to it as well you'll feel it when it's lodged in your pocket or your bag or whatever but not too cumbersome to clutch flip this bad boy over and it is your basic plastic arse end Thankfully the good news is you've got a matte finish to it and it seems reasonably fine at masking smudgy prints. You've got to have it catching the light just so to sort of pick up on the, uh, the greasy goodness. Of course naturally I'll be putting the Galaxy A53 through my standard fried chicken test later in the week just to make sure it's not done in by greasy takeaways. You've got a choice of four different colour options here in the UK. Once again Samsung has been super modest with its naming conventions going with awesome black, awesome white, awesome peach or this here awesome blue model. Is it actually awesome? Well that kind of depends on your definition of awesome. Is it the actual definition of awesome or is it more like hey Kevin just necked his pint and then puked up all over Dave's shoes. Awesome. But it is really rather lovely indeed and I really like the way that the camera chassis only subtly and gently slopes up above the rest of the surface of the smartphone. It's very subtle protrusion and those edges which are also constructed from plastic nice and shiny as well just to break up that matte design a bit. That display is constructed from Gorilla Glass 5 so it should prove nice and hardy hopefully keep it free of scratches and nicks and other scuffs as well just as well because there's no pre-installed screen protector on the Galaxy A53 and this smartphone is also IP67 water and dust resistant so literally you can drop it in your bubbly bath take in the shower whatever you want no worries whatsoever that's a very rare feature at this sort of price point only offered by the likes of the iPhone SE 2022 and that smartphone is shit, so don't get that one. So overall quite like the design of uh, this, this Galaxy Blower but what about the software running on this thing? Well it is the latest freshest Android 12 thankfully you don't have to hang around waiting for it to finally update to that one. And as you can see there Samsung's One UI launcher version 4.1 is slathered on top. Now if you've used the Samsung smartphone before you'll know what to expect from One UI, all of its various joys and foibles. You've got all the standard sort of Android fare on here like the Google Discover feed, you can drag down that notifications bar from anywhere. Lots and lots of toggles to mess about with in there that's for sure and then of course usual apps tray except done slightly differently. I've ordered it in alphabetical order uh, just by tapping up here because uh, by default it's set to a custom order which is basically just kind of like the order you install the apps in I think which is stupid. One of my major bugbears with Samsung smartphones and One UI is the fact you get so many apps slapped on here so much crapware that you end up having to uninstall like good old LinkedIn of course. Likes of Outlook does anyone even still use Outlook? You've got TikTok Spotify, Booking.com, none of this stuff I wanted installed on here but you don't get a choice unfortunately so you just have to uninstall it. And as far as Samsung's own apps go quite a lot of them are actually pretty decent like some Samsung Health, Samsung Pay uh, but of course a lot of them are just basically alternative to Google's own apps like Google Pay for instance. Smart Things is just another alternative to Google Home, you've got Samsung's own web browser and app shop and everything. 
Thankfully, again, most of these can be uninstalled. Uh, so if you don't use Samsung's own services, you can just do that. It's just a bit of a pain in the arse. And then if you dive on into the smartphone settings, this is where One UI really shines because they throw in a lot of extra bonus bits, which you don't get with standard Android, which are actually worth a gander. So for instance, you do have an always on display option as well, fully customizable. Uh, so you can play around with all of the different clock styles and get it set up just the way you like it. Oh man, I actually feel really sorry for the fake person that Samsung set this calendar up for, because imagine that's your birthday. You've got a meeting with Sue, followed by the car wash. You've also got Samsung's Knox security suite on here, which adds a whole bunch of very useful tools to help keep your privates private, the likes of Samsung Pass, secure folder, secure Wi-Fi. Definitely well worth a look if you're worried about naughty criminal types getting hold of your bits. And you've also got a very handy one-handed mode as well. Handy, not a pun that was intended, I promise. And this just uh, shrinks everything down to make it that much easier to fondle with the one mitt, which is definitely helpful uh, on a 6.5 inch blower like this. But anyhow, if you want to know all about One UI 4, I have done a full review and best features guide uh, right here on Techspert, so go check that out. Before we shift on entirely from the subject of security, however, you do have an in-display fingerprint sensor here on the Samsung Galaxy A53. It is your basic optical scanner, standard for this sort of price point, so it just takes a 2D image and then just reads that whenever you want to unlock your smartphone. So far, touch wood, seems pretty responsive and accurate. And you've also got a pretty secure version of Face Unlock here on One UI as well with various tools such as, for instance, requiring open eyes to actually unlock so no one can just like hold your phone to your sleeping face and have a read of your messages while you're having a kip or whatever. And again, touch wood, this seems to be pretty reliable overall, but I will be fully testing uh, all of this stuff for my in-depth review. As for your storage, well, that's set at 128 gigs on this blower. And if you look here, the second SIM slot also doubles up as a micro SD memory card slot. So you can expand that storage by up to a further terabyte. Now, one of the best thing about Samsung mid-rangers is the fact they don't skimp on the display tech. You've got a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED display here. Same full HD plus resolution as the previous generation, which means nice crisp visuals. As far as I can tell, it's basically the same panel as the A52S 5G. You've once again got really poppy colors. Of course, you can dive into the display settings and dial that down a bit if you prefer more natural output. But I really like that default config here on the A53. I think it's perfect for your Netflix, your Disney Plus, even if you're just browsing your photo collection. That Infinity or Orifice only intrudes a teeny weeny little bit on the action when you go full screen. It is impressively dinky. View and angles are great, no worries there. And top brightness it seems just about powerful enough so you can clearly see what's going on outdoors, though it is quite an overcast day today. Hopefully we'll get some sunshine later in the week so I can fully test that out. According to Samsung, it is a bit brighter now, tops off at 800 nits. Um, so yeah, should be absolutely fine because I had no worries with the previous gen. And as before, it's a 120 hertz panel as well. You can drop it down to 60 hertz refresh if you'd rather favor the battery life instead. Well, those are your two options, basically. As for the audio side of things, well, it's a stereo your speaker setup here on the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. Let's just pump up the volume, see what we got. You know, bad back, bad knees, the hangovers, oh my god, the hangovers. You'll literally have two shandies and the next day it feels like Satan and all of his many minions are skull you to death. So yeah, on the top volume, it's got a bit of a kick to it, that's for damn sure. The audio quality is reasonably strong as well so it should be again absolutely fine for just kicking back with your favorite bold git on youtube of course if you are gonna want to enjoy some music you're gonna have to get some headphones on the go and that's where things get a little bit bitter unfortunately because the old a52s 5g had a headphone jack down below but on the a53s bugger all that has been absolutely curb stomped out of existence so you want to enjoy your tunes here on the a53 well you're gonna have to use one of those god awful dongly things otherwise you're gonna have to use a bit of bluetooth get connected wirelessly. Now, while Samsung previously went Snapdragon for its A-series handsets, the A52, the A52S, etc., the A53 is instead powered by a five nanometer Exynos 1280 chipset of Samsung's own creation, backed here by six gigs of RAM. According to Samsung, at least, this is supposed to offer a massive leap in GPU performance compared with last year's A52. Well, one thing's for sure is the Geekbench scores aren't particularly impressive, has to be said, especially when you compare them side by side with, again, last year's A52S 5G handset. Now, that's quite a remarkable dip in the multi-core score right there, so that doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. 
But of course, it's not necessarily about a bunch of numbers spaffed out by a benchmarking app. What I needed to do to really test out the Galaxy Air 53 S 5G's grunt is to launch a good bit of Genshin Impact up and see if it can handle this almighty Android title. I kept the graphics settings on the default level, which for the semi blur was low, unfortunately. And even more unfortunately, at that low detail settings, it didn't really cope very well at all. There was lots of juddering going on, some serious frame rate drops here and there. And also the graphics are, to put it politely, a bit pants. And that is a shame because some mid-range rivals like the Poco F3, uh, like the OnePlus Nord 2, can handle Genshin Impact for a similar sort of price. If you are a gamer, you might want to look elsewhere then. Otherwise, alternatively, the Galaxy A53 5G can cope perfectly well with PUBG. Call of Duty Mobile played flawlessly, excellent frame rate throughout and the touch response rate of the screen is fantastic too so every poke and swipe instantly registered so you can blow your fellow human beings face off from 100 yards samsung's gaming mode is still on board here as well slightly awkward to conjure up you've got to drag down the notifications bar in game but it offers up a reasonable selection of tools including screenshot options you can record the action if you like there's a priority mode to kill all the notifications so I haven't entirely given up on the Galaxy A53 5G. I will keep on pounding it with a good bit of Genshin, see if I can get it working properly on this thing. Maybe it was just early jitters or something like that. But yeah, stay tuned for my in-depth review for more on all that. And of course, because it's called the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G, yes, it's got 5G uh, stuffed in there as well, as you would kind of hope for from a £400 smartphone now that you can get phones that are 200 quid that also have 5G. So the design is basically the same. The headphone jack has gone. The game and performance isn't quite as strong, but one serious upgrade for the A53 is the battery, which has been upgraded in size. You've now got a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity cell crammed inside of that lovely, awesome chassis. Now, will the battery life actually be better? Because of course, bearing in mind, you've got an Exodus chipset in there now instead of a Snapdragon. Well, only time will tell. Again, stay tuned for my in-depth review for full thoughts on that. What I can tell you right now is that the 25 watt fast charging support here on the A53 5G, pretty lethargic compared with a lot of rivals at this sort of price point that offer, you know, 40, 50, even 65 watt fast charging instead. Hell, grab yourself a Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G and that thing offers 120 watt fast charging, which is just ludicrously insane. And of course, there's no adapter bundled in the box, so you'll have to provide your own. Good for the environment, not so good for your bank balance if you don't already have one, but you should do from your previous smartphone, so it's no biggie. However, as far as wireless charging goes, no wireless charging support here on the A53. Again, not a surprise because very few smartphones around the £400 price point offer wireless chargers, just the likes of, again, the iPhone SE 2022, which, as I previously stated, is absolute ass. I'd rather have cock rot than use that thing as my full-time phone. So let's end this unboxing extravaganza with a squint at the camera tech headed up here on the back end of the A53 5G by a 64 meg primary shooter. Now again, if you've used a Samsung smartphone in recent times, you should know exactly what to expect here. It's a very similar UI to the more expensive S series flagships. You start off in full auto mode, but you've also got a big selection of bonus modes that you can choose from, including the standard portrait mode where you can actually change up the bokeh effect using this handy on-screen slider. Jump on into the more section and you can play around with the likes of the pro mode, which is quite handy if you're actually a photographer, you're comfortable messing around with the uh, focus point, the ISO levels, the white balance. The focus slider is particularly good if you just want to smoothly shift between two different focal points. And you've also got a dedicated night mode, you've got a dedicated food mode if you need to snap things before you shove them inside of your face. All kinds of stuff. And yes, you do have the obligatory Samsung fun mode. It's just so much fun. Are you having fun, kiddies? I'm definitely having fun. Oh look, she's got a, uh, a cat humping her head. Awesome. Seriously, whoever invented this fun mode, I hate you with every single cell in my body. Anywho, that 64 meg primary shooter uses four in one pixel bin to capture 16 meg images by default. Here's just a few quick test sample shots that I snapped around the homestead. Again, I'll be taking this out and about in central London, all over the place, testing it day and night to see how good it really is. It does seem absolutely adamant that I should switch to macro mode pretty much at all times. I'm not really sure why. It does have a basic macro lens on it as well as a depth sensor and also a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. So that should be pretty good if you want your more dramatic kind of picture or otherwise if you're trying to just fit a lot into frame. And when it comes to video, you can shoot full HD footage at 30 or 60 frames per second. Otherwise also 4K footage 
at just the 30 fps there's no 60 fps option there and again here's just a brief taste of some home movie footage i shot around the homestead this past 24 hours but stay tuned for that in-depth galaxy a53 review for more on all that and last but not least up front you've got a 32 megapixel selfie shooter in that infinity or orifice up top i'm sure that'll be absolutely fine for your everyday selfie snaps as you can see you've been going to ultra wide mode where it pulls out dramatically a huge amount uh, to fit extra heads into frame or just extra backgrounds once again you can shoot uh, selfie pics with the portrait mode enabled as well get a bit of that bokeh background effect on the go and the good news for any wannabe vloggers or what have you out there is you can actually shoot 4k ultra hd video footage using that 32 meg selfie snapper and the vocal pickup is really strong as well so there you have it my lovelies that in a nutshell is the samsung galaxy a53 5g and it looks like a pretty nifty mid-range mobile overall but gotta say the gaming performance definitely seems to be a bit of a downgrade versus the previous generation as does that lack of a headphone jack so bit of a bummer let's hope that the battery life the camera tech etc make up for the pitfalls here on this latest freshest mid-range mobile but definitely as i say i'll be slapping my sim in there using it as my full-time smartphone for about a week or so so stay tuned for that in-depth review it'll be coming at your face real soon and in the meantime let me know what you reckon down in the comments below are you tempted or are you a little bit disappointed maybe you're just gonna try and grab yourself an old a52 or an a52s instead if you enjoyed this video please do pork subscribe and ding that notifications bell down below do me a kindness be very much appreciated have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week and that's pretty much it cheers everyone love you